Hi, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. As you probably know, a Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And uh, every edition, we highlight a, a nonprofit organization in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County, doing great work uh, in, in our community. And we're really lucky to have uh, Sarah Tinger with us today, who is the general manager of the Santa Cruz Hostel, which is a wonderful organization. And we hope, hope to learn much, much more about it. Sarah, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to oh, speak with me today. Absolutely. We're happy to have you. Sarah, just for people who aren't familiar with you and maybe your background and how you got involved with the hostel, uh, give us a little bit of that and uh, you know, tell us how you came to be the general manager of Santa Cruz Hostel. Yeah, well, I feel very fortunate. Um, I, I came out this way from Nashville, Tennessee. I've been here um, wow. almost, it'll be three years in September. Um, I previously managed a hostel in Nashville um, and then became aware of this position and interviewed, got the position and moved out. That's terrific. I looked, I spent some time uh, looking at your website. It's fantastic, really informative and looked at your board of directors. Very impressive. Some folks that I know, but uh uh, tell us more about uh, uh, the Santa Cruz Hostel itself. Uh, you know how people can access that kind of kind of what you're doing today to welcome people into the community and uh, have them give them a place to stay. Yeah, one of the things that really excited me about this job is that it is a nonprofit, which is very unusual for a hostel. Um, and my background is in nonprofit management, so this was just right up my wheelhouse. Um, the Santa Cruz Hostel Society was started in 1978, I believe, hmm. um, and we, it, the home to the hostel is now the Carmelita Cottages up on Beach Hill, which is a set of six historic cottages owned by the city of Santa Cruz. Um, we lease the space from them, and um, in exchange, we keep up all the historic cottages and the gardens, and we use the space as a hostel. Um, so that's really unique. Um, and we just really enjoy the space and we love welcoming guests from all over the world. Um, we get about 40% of our guests from outside of the U.S. Oh. Right now is our busiest time. Um, we are two blocks from Main Beach and the wharf and the boardwalk. So it's the perfect location for people that are typically coming without transportation to experience all things Santa Cruz. Oh, ideal location really couldn't be better. You know, I uh, years ago uh, traveled in Europe and experienced their hostel system and, uh, you know, very welcoming and uh, wonderful. And uh, I, but the, the problem was that there was such limited space that people could only stay for two nights. And I noticed on your website that you're allowing folks to stay for six nights, which is a terrifically uh, expansive to, period of time. Yeah, we want people to be able to explore Santa Cruz for more than just a couple of days. There's a lot going on here, especially if you love the outdoors. Um, we do a lot of events during the week um, that include our neighbors. Uh, we do community potlucks every Wednesday at six o'clock. Uh, we have neighbors that come. We have uh, our guests that are here, our staff and our board members all come and participate. Um, it's just a really great event for especially our international guests just to get a really good feel of what the culture is like here yeah. um we do limit our stays to 14 days for the entire year but I in one group well. yeah mm -hmm. you can come in um for just six nights max and then we want to be able to leave room for other travelers to come in and um experience it as well I think that's a wise policy, and everybody can, can share the experience and, and share the use. Uh, when I was traveling, of course, and, and stayed in Europe, uh, the hostels seemed to be busy year-round. There wasn't really any season for it. Is, is that true with your hostel, or is there some increased kind of occupancy during periods of time? Yeah, I think it's pretty seasonal here in Santa Cruz. Um, June, July, August, and September being our busiest months. Um, but I'm always telling people that the rest of the months are also very beautiful here. Yeah, of course. Um, but we also on, you know, our slower season, we host a lot of colleges and school groups coming in from around California and outside of California. 
um, that are here doing retreats or research. Um, we get a lot of UCSC groups um, and groups Amen. from Berkeley and Stanford yeah. that are coming in um, to do working something with the ocean or uh, the uh, marine sanctuary. So of it's really just a great affordable um, accommodations for groups, families, solely solo travelers. So you've told us where you are. Kind of give us an idea of what the accommodations are like. Yeah. Oh, um, so we just received a grant from the Coastal Commission or the Coastal Conservancy. Mm -hmm. So we will be doing some renovations, but all the cottages are from the late 1800s. Um, so all of them are very unique and very different. Um, we have private rooms that can hold up to three people, or we have dorm rooms that hold up to six people with uh, three bunk beds in each room. Um, you can also rent full cottages. So we get a lot of families that come in and, and we'll rent a full space. Right now we have a family of nine from Germany. Um, and this has just been a perfect spot for them. Um, we also have, uh, you can come in and use the garden. So just, we're also a city park. So if people are just coming in around town and they're looking for a spot to just relax, um, we just got our rose garden re-bricked and it looks really beautiful and it's really a spotlight of our property um, yeah. when people are just walking by. Yeah. So are you now a bed and board or they have they get their, their food to other places around town? You, other than the potluck, of course, you're talking about. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, communal areas. So we have a, a grill people can use, a fire pit. Oh, we have a full kitchen that's in, fully stocked with pots and pans and seasonings and random leftover things that guests leave behind. Um, so we get a lot of people that one of the reasons why people stay at a hostel is to kind of save money to be able to do different things while they're in town and spend their money in different ways. So being able to cook, I think, is one of the really great benefits. Um, there's a fridge for people to store their food. So you can, you know, if you're going to be here in the morning and you want to make your own breakfast and then you head out for the day, you come back, have some snacks and go back out and explore some more. Ah, it sounds like a wonderful experience. So now the grant money that you have just gotten, is is that going to be incorporated into some improvements that are happening now or going to be happening in the future? Yeah, so um, we had this smaller cottage space that we used to just use for storage, um, and that's going to be turning into uh, another guest space. So it'll be its own building with its own bathroom. And then it'll, we call it more like a family room. It'll have a queen bed and a twin bed in it. Oh. Um, we'll also be doing some renovations in just the bathroom spaces and uh, adding private bathrooms to some of the private rooms mm -hmm. instead of having to share so much space. Right. Um, the, originally, the grant was applied for during COVID. Oh um, so one of the things that we really focused on was having spaces that were more separate so that people didn't have to share so much air. <laughs> yeah, of course. So now people are coming, of course, and they're bringing their own, their own toiletries and their clothing and things like that. Uh, do you have some service to kind of maintain the, the, the area uh, while they're there? Or they, they have to, is it their responsibility to kind of make the bed and take care of everything and keep it clean? Yeah, so it, we are a self-catering hostel, so we expect our guests to clean up after themselves, mm -hmm. um, to jump in and help where they can. At the end of your stay, you bring your linens to the laundry for us, um, but we do all the cleaning and um, the making of the beds. All linens oh, are really? provided. Um, we have a lot of leftover toiletries from past guests, so if people are coming in without shampoos and conditioners, there's a whole drawer filled with different things. Um, we try and make just feel as welcoming as possible. When you walk onto this property, it really is just uh, an amazing space. We have just the most gorgeous trees and we have our own redwood. Um, and just the history of the space that this property was um, given to the city by a woman named Lottie Sly. Hmm. And um, she had been the most recent owner of the property, which I could go on and on about her 
because she has a really interesting history in the property itself. But um, she gifted this property to the city and we um, were approached and said that the space was available. Um, the city didn't really know what to do with it um, because it had to remain a public space. Mm -hmm. So they were thinking about taking down the cottages, uh, but the neighbors weren't a fan of that since they were all historic. So we um, were in litigation for almost 10 years. Oh my. To um, get a lease here and we signed a lease with the city for 30 years and we just signed another lease with the city for 20 more years good um uh, before we go too far i want to make sure that people are aware that they can donate to the santa cruz hospital so just tell us briefly about how people can do that and then we can move on to some other things yeah we're always looking for money of course um <laughs> just to help with our programming and starting new pr programming one of the things we're really focusing on this year is um, just the more community aspect and um, sustainability, eco-friendly. Um, so getting people, you know, from maybe from the Central Valley that aren't getting over to the ocean enough, um, maybe because they don't have enough funds to stay overnight. Um, so just making those uh, making those funds available for people to be able to enjoy Santa Cruz like so many people do. Um, so you can go onto our website. Um, we do have a link to donate there. We also okay. have a list of items that we're in need of, um, which is just always kind of a rolling uh, list of things that we need. Um, right now, our main thing that we really need is we have this beautiful new patio, but we don't have any beautiful new patio furniture to uh -huh. put on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Excellent. That's SantaCruzHostel.org? Correct. Beautiful. Now, you know, one of the most important elements, uh, fascinating elements to me, is the hostel. Uh, they're welcoming people into our community and showing them the beauty that we have and all the wonderful activities we have. And a lot, some of that seems like it might be done through your volunteer program. It's fascinating. I looked on the, the website and all the different volunteer opportunities that you have. Tell us, tell us about that. Yeah, well, our space is literally set inside of a garden. So we have board members um, that are master gardeners, that are landscape architects. Um, so they kind of guide us. And we have volunteers that come in and help us with all the planting and the weeding and the keeping the property beautiful. Um, we have also have volunteers that there's a walking tour of the historic cottage or of the historic Victorian houses here uh -huh. on Beach Hill. Um, so we've had people give tours to our guests. We've had them take them surfing. Um, you know, just the guests really want that personal like um, experiences that are kind of different than just the go online, find out what you can do. So anybody that wants that has something to share with guests or wants to do a community dinner or wants to come just have maybe a conversational French night, we're always open to people coming in and sharing our space. Yeah, it's uh, one of the features I think that's unique even to Santa Cruz is that how generous our community is and how much people want to share our community with people who are you know coming into the community for the first time maybe and don't really see a lot of santa cruz or don't hear a lot about it and all of a sudden they're here and they see all the great things that we have you know up the marine sanctuary and the downtown yes. and, the, and, the, and the and the vendors and all the cultural aspects of it one of the things i did see on the website is that you have some volunteers who teach travel classes that that seemed fascinating to me. Yeah, so people can um, a lot of times after you go on a trip or something and maybe you found out different uh, techniques for doing um, like the cheapest travel or the best hostels or the most efficient way to pack. So you only have one bag to carry around. Um, so just really sharing those tips with young travelers that are just yeah. starting to get on, you know, just starting to plan their adventures, mm -hmm. um, teaching youth that hostels are here in America. I think yeah. that a lot of people do not know that they even exist here. We have a lot of first time hostelers uh, that 
didn't even know what a hostel was. They more stumbled upon us because I think we're the most affordable option in Santa Cruz. Of course, yeah. Um, so sometimes people pick us only for that reason, but then they come in and they really feel embraced by our staff and by the people that live in the area. And then they really feel what a hostel really is. Do you, uh, uh, as administrators, uh, do you network with other hostels? So if somebody's staying with you and they say, hey, I want to stay in another hostel and I'm going uh, up north or down south or something, you have an opportunity to give them some information that you would have readily at hand? Yeah, we actually, um, in the last few years, there's an organization that just started. It's called Hosteling.us. Huh. And it's a website with a list of any hostel that wants to be on it but you have to be a reputable hostel that has good reviews um and is really focused on travelers coming into your city to experience it um so there is that which i highly recommend but also we just talk to all the hostels i mean there's uh pigeon point just north of us there's the monterey hostel just south of us oh my um and one of the other kind of interesting things is that those the hostels really on the coast of California in our little area are all nonprofits. So oh, Hostel International has a big network, yeah. and that's what Pigeon Point is. And then there's Montero right above it, um, closer to Half Moon Bay. Um, the Monterey Hostel just opened this last March, so this is their first season, and they have a great location, uh, two blocks from the aquarium. Oh my. And it's really just a beautiful space. Um, a friend of mine is the one that runs that that um, that location, and he's the one that actually put me in touch with the person to get this job because our the architect for his project in Monterey is the president of the board here in Santa Cruz, Terry Fisher. I'll be doggone. And another thing that I saw on the website, and this just fascinated me, that you have a work for stay program. Now that's just fantastic. Tell us about that. Yeah, one of the things that we just love is we have international travelers um, that come in and it can be anywhere from three to four weeks and they come and help us um, with social media, uh, interacting with guests, and then sometimes they help with yoga or making beds, cleaning the property. Um, and so they, in exchange for helping us during the week, they get a bed so they get to save money while they explore around Santa Cruz. Um, so they really get that really just personal experience and really get to see what Santa Cruz is like for like a local. Well, that's just wonderful. Yeah. You know, to be able to Right do now that. we have two that are, one is from France right now and one is from India. So uh, they just got here a week and a half ago and it's been really fun just getting to know them um a lot, a lot of the international work stay volunteers come mm -hmm. to get to better their english um it's their first time in california so mm -hmm. just hearing their enthusiasm and especially right now in santa cruz i mean every night there's something right oh absolutely boardwalk, no, question, no question movies about it. on yeah. the wharf they have live music and yeah you can hear the screams from the rides <laughs> here at the hostel so <laughs> So how do folks, uh, other than your website, of course, which is really very informative, how do folks find out about uh, the availability of, uh, of, of hostel where you stay and um, uh, how they can get in touch with you? Do you have a social yeah, media um, presence, for instance? We do. Yeah, we are on Instagram and Facebook. On Instagram, you can find us uh, at The Santa Cruz Hostel. Um, and we really keep up on that a lot on our stories. We share weekly things that are going on here in Santa Cruz um, so that guests can kind of plan their week while they're here. Um, and our website has a ton of information and we love people that want to book directly on our website instead of using third parties like Airbnb or booking.com. Mm -hmm. Now, are you uh, you're talking about the cultural outings that I saw in your volunteer kind of section of the website? What would those entail? Somebody, I know there's some, some, some tremendous culture in Santa Cruz, so it's not difficult to imagine that you know, there's some the, the experiences there. How does that work, really? Oh, well, one of the things that like we'll plan, uh, we have like one monthly outing 
So one of the things that we really like to do is take people down to the beach for a fire at like Twin Lakes. Oh my. Yeah. So that's really just a unique thing that I think if you're not staying at a hostel or if you're um, don't have a lot of time to maybe uh, plan something like that, we have everything down there for you. Uh, we have the wood and everything and provide all the stuff. Um, on Saturdays, we also do beach days. So we have a shape tent down at Main Beach. So it has one area where all the guests can kind of congregate and chat with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not having to hang out alone if they're solo travelers. Yeah. A lot of times you're staying at a hostel because you wanna meet friends and yeah. you wanna be chatting. Um, but you also love traveling alone. <laughs> yeah, of course. Other than the beach, of course, and the Monterey Bay Marine Sanctuary. Right. Is, is oh, there the an attraction? Redwoods. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, the Redwoods, a lot of mountain biking, oh, really? um, surf excursions. Um, now, I always take people boogie boarding. And oh, for goodness sakes. That paddle boarding. I mean, just, you know, so many fun things. Now, how do you hook folks up with if they want to go biking or they want to get some surf lessons or they want to get a boogie board? Uh, you you have some connections with those folks who provide those services or a little bit of you know rudimentary training so they can stand up on the board when they get out there? Right. Yeah. I uh, Well, when I first moved here, I was really interested in getting to learn to surf. And uh, one of the people that I ran into at one of the community events was Ed from Club Ed. Oh so my. it's yeah. really nice to just kind of have that connection. And I got up my first time on my first wave. Goodness gracious. So that is where I send a lot of our guests. And they just come back with that perma grin of surfing. Like I had an amazing time. Yeah. Um, so it's really nice too. We're a very short walk from Cowell's Surf Shop. Um, so it's easy for people just to go and grab boards and go out. We also have a lot of leftover things here at the hostel from previous guests. So we have some boogies, we have surfboards, um, we have secure storage for bikes. So really just promoting people to get up and move their body. Um, yeah. Today, this morning, we have beach yoga every Friday morning at 10. And that's for both community members and uh, people staying here at the hostel. Oh, that's wonderful. It's a very holistic approach, you know, I think is to very inclusive and in that if Santa Cruz is anything, it's a very, very inclusive community. As, uh, as just an administrative uh, side, uh, as a general manager, do you uh, communicate with other general managers of hostels, kind of share experiences and, and to kind of improve the level of, of service that you provide? Yeah, we do um, a lot of just, we have like a text thread on WhatsApp with a hundred different hostels. Yeah. Um, so if you have something going on that maybe you haven't experienced before and you need to figure out how to navigate it, um, if you have a troublesome guest maybe that, uh, that you want to share with other people so that they kind of know what's going on if that person decides to book with them. We have a great, a really great network uh, with other hostel owners and managers. Um, yeah, just every, the hostel community just wants, you know, their guests to come in and have fun yeah. and feel relaxed and safe. Um, and I think that's one of the most important things about staying at a hostel. Yeah. And I think uh, it's one of the things that struck me as I looked at your website and your board of directors, you know, all people who are very engaged in the community, very hands-on, very welcoming, willing to share the experiences. And I think that that makes the entire hostel experience, you know, so much richer. Yeah. Um, it was one of the things that surprised me the most is um, even with my background in nonprofits, boards aren't always very active. And the board here at the Santa Cruz Hostel is very active. They stop in, they participate in event in events. Um, they're always sharing about us. They invite guests on different things that they're doing, whether they're part of a running club or um, are taking a group to UCSC to look at the flowers. Uh, yeah, it just is amazing to me how open people are to share their time. 
And I'm happy that you mentioned actually uh, UCSC, often, you know, a, a forgotten part of, of Santa Cruz. And people think about the Marine Sanctuary and the boardwalk in downtown and the artists and vendors. They forget, you know, that the attractions that we have at a wonderful university and a yes. beautiful setting, you know. Yeah, the gardens there are amazing. And with those B cycle bikes, we have a spot just down the road. From oh, do us. you? So you can grab a B cycle, head out to UCSC, grab a B cycle, head to Capitola. Um, it's that's one thing that our guests definitely uh, take advantage of yeah. is the bike, the bike ability here in Santa oh, Cruz. Of course, yeah. And how now, uh, you have uh, uh, foreign guests to come in and may not be familiar with uh, how the B cycle technology works. Are you able to help them a little bit, kind of, you know, navigate, yeah. navigate the mysteries of how to actually wrap one of those things? <laughs> Yeah, we actually, our guests are all ages um, from 18 up to 85. Uh, we really have guests that just, just from all over the world and all different backgrounds. And some people that are here trying to figure out their life, some people that are here that are finally have time in their life to explore the things that they've wanted to um so it's a lot of fun just being in this environment and hearing everybody's stories and that's one thing that i really like about this smaller hostel it's only 42 beds here mm -hmm. um is that you really know each guest by name you talk to them you see them you when you check them in you remember them you know what they like to do while they're here um so yeah it's really just a perfect size and just a lot of fun yeah well, at Santa Cruz Hospital, it's very fortunate to have somebody with your energy, you know, your engagement and your welcoming spirit, you know, for people to come in. It's a great reflection of our community. So we appreciate, you know, what you do. Uh, we've got uh, two or three minutes left. Uh, uh, tell us about uh, how you see the future of the hospital. I know you said mentioned grants and whatnot, but, but in your tenure as general manager, how do you see it kind of uh, uh, expanding and moving into the future? Um, yeah, I see us really expanding our programming, um, working a lot more on fundraising. Um, one of the things that I started when I got here was an annual event called the Beach Hill Bash. And the Beach Hill Bash this year is October 26th. Um, the Joint Chiefs come in and play in oh the parking lot. Any final thoughts for us? If you are here in Santa Cruz, stop in and see us, share about us. Um, I think if you walk onto this property, you'll just be amazed at uh, the feeling that you get when you come in here. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for being with us and for Sarah. Uh, again, uh, Sarah Tinger, the general manager of Santa Cruz Hostel, santacruzhostel.org. If you have some uh, extra cash you'd like to contribute to them or the volunteer programs we mentioned, which is just you know, such a great opportunity for people in the community to come in and engage and enjoy. Uh, this has been Nonprofit Spotlight, of course, and we'll have another program uh, soon highlighting another great organization uh, like the Santa Cruz Hostel who makes Santa Cruz the great experience and wonderful community that it is. Sarah, this has been Steve <laughs> Plates uh, for Community yeah. TV and the Volunteer Advisory Committee, and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.